Then comes the middle layer in the endometrial uh, wall, which is known as the myometrium, and this is the layer having the muscles. And the uh, outermost layer of the endometrium, which forms the first, the, the third uh, line, uh, layer in the endometrial lining, and this is what we call it the perimetrium or the serous layer. So uh, these are the three layers forming the endometrial wall. So the endometrium, innermost layer, the uh, middle layer, which is the myometrium, and the serous layer. So this cavity inside is known as the uterine cavity, which increases its volume when the lady is pregnant so that the baby can fit here. Uh, as we said before, the fallopian tube is the site of fertilization. It is where the fertilization between the sperm and the egg takes place. So when the fertilization takes place after the egg cell is ovulated and released outside the ovary, so these are the ovaries, the egg cell will be released outside the ovary into the fallopian tube. Fertilization will take place here in the fallopian tube and then the zygote starts dividing by mitosis and then moving all the way due to the beating of the cilia present in the fallopian tube, which will help this uh, fertilized zygote to move until it reaches into the uterus where it's gonna implant itself in the uterine lining. Remember that I told you for successful pregnancy to take place, there should be three uh, important processes to be accomplished. The first one is the ovulation, which will release the egg cell into the fallopian tube. The second one is the uh, fertilization, which takes place in the fallopian tube, and eventually the implantation of the zygote into the endometrium, which is the innermost layer of the uh, uterus. So if all of these three processes succeed, the lady will succeed in being pregnant. So the lower part of the uterus is known as the cervix. It's a constricted part and it has um, glands which secrete the cervical mucus. And the, these cervical mucus uh, have a particular density which differs throughout the sexual cycle. So uh, when uh, the sexual cycle is close to ovulation, the density of this uh, of these secretions of this liquid secreted by the cervical glands will become less, while in the other parts of the sexual cycle the density will become more. And this is only to facilitate the entrance of the sperms. So because we said that the vagina is the organ of copulation, so the sperms are going to be inserted into the vagina. If the lady is in is around her ovulation phase, the sperms are going to find an easy way through the cervix, travel into the uterine cavity, and then head towards the fallopian tube where the egg cell is released. While, while um, in the other parts of the sexual cycle, most of the sperms will actually be trapped in the cervical mucus because the cervical mucus will be dense. Stages of the sexual cycle. In humans, the sexual cycle takes around 28 days. We said uh, it might differ from like 25 to 35 days, and this is actually normal. Uh, there are lots of cyclic changes that take place at the level of the reproductive system of the female. The most important changes take place at the level of the uterus and at the level of the ovaries. We said before that the ovaries is the site of ovulation and it is the site where folliculogenesis takes place as well. So the follicles in the ovaries start to develop until they start to develop a number of these follicles starts to develop every month around 10. Only one follicle succeeds to reach the graphene stage. It will become the graphene follicle and only this follicle will rapture to release its egg cell at the day of ovulation. The follicular cells that remain in the ovary will change into the corpus luteum and these follicular cells that have changed into the corpus luteum, if no fertilization has taken place, they will regress into the corpus albicans, which will degenerate and totally disappear at the day 28. And this is gonna mark the end of this cycle and the start of another cycle. 
During menses, which is also known as menstruation,